Hello everyone. I'm glad you could join us for our Sunday school lesson this morning. And as always, I do hope and pray that everyone is doing well and everyone has had a good week. Um, I know I'm certainly blessed. Um, I thank the Lord for that. And this morning, with the Lord's help, we'll get into chapter 12 of the book of Proverbs. And here in chapter 12, much like last week in chapter 11, we have um, a lot of contrasting verses here that are about good and bad. Um, we've talked a lot about uh, uh, wisdom and, and wickedness, lawlessness, um, all sorts of things like that. And chapter 12 is is much like chapter 11 with these contrasting verses um, telling us, giving us instruction on how to live everyday life, um, how we should treat every situation that comes up in our life. And if we can just listen and learn and get the knowledge that we need through God's Word, uh, we can gain that wisdom and get with, get rid of that wickedness. Here in chapter 12, verse 1, book of Proverbs, it says, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. You know, just like I was just saying, if we can learn to just listen to instruction, uh, listen to God's Word, listen to the people that are trying to help us in our lives, we can gain that wisdom. But if we're always um, standoffish and, and not taking instruction and all of that, then all we do is create evil in our lives and, and bad stuff in our lives. Verse 2, it says, A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. Here again, it's saying that the wise man, the good man, the saved man, and, and when I say man and when the Bible says man, it's talking about humanity in general, men, women, children, um, but it's saying that, that the wise, the good, and the saved will, will find favor with the Lord. And the good and the bad and the evil, the bad and the evil person says they will be condemned. Verse 3 says, A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. If you're going to build a house, you need to build that house on a strong foundation uh, for it to be able to last and for it to be able to withstand all the winds and the, the rains and the snows and the weather and all and, and all everything that this earth throws at it. But um, it's just like Jesus Christ. In our lives, we should build our lives upon that solid rock, upon that solid foundation of Jesus Christ. Because it says that all other ground is sinking sand, and we all know what that means. Verse 4 says, A, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. And it talks about a woman here being faithful to her husband in every way. And vice versa, you know, husbands should be faithful to their wives in every way. If a good thing to go by is if you're married 
and you're having to hide something from your spouse, um, if you're talking, if you're a man talking to another woman or a woman talking to another man, um, or cheating or, or lying or whatever you're doing, if you're, if you have to hide that from your spouse, then you can just about bet that that it it's wrong. You're not supposed to be doing it. Verse 5 says, The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Last week, if you remember when we were talking about wicked, <coughs> I told you to kind of change that word to lawless, and it it's a better word to use there um, to help you understand it a little better, but God believes in law and order we see this through throughout the whole bible verse 8 says a man shall be condemned according to his wisdom commended excuse me let me start that over it says a man shall be commended according to his wisdom but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised that's so true. A man that's wise and that that has Jesus Christ in his heart, in his life, and and tries to live his best for Jesus Christ, you know, he's to be commended of that. But someone that has evil and wickedness in their heart um you know in the end he's going to be he's going to be despised verse 9 says he that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread we may not have much money or many glamorous things but as long as your needs are met if if you eat if you have a roof over your head a place to live a job um, your kids are taken care of you have clothes on your back your kids don't go hungry they have what they need we should be satisfied with that we shouldn't uh, try to overlive our means. We shouldn't try to um, have everything in the world. Uh, we should just be happy because, you know, we're promised that the Lord will supply our needs. Not our wants, but our needs. Verse 10 says, A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Throughout the book of Proverbs, we see a lot of repetition. Uh, a lot of things seem to say the same thing over and over again. And you think about your life. If you want to get better at a sport, if you want to get better at doing something, then how do you do that? Practice. Or doing it over and over and over again. And the more you do it, the better you get at it, right? Same thing with God's Word. The more we read it, the more we study it, the more we learn, the more we know. 
that's then that's the way we're supposed to do study to show thyself approved verse 12 says the wicked desireth the net of evil men but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit the wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips but the just shall come out of trouble If you tell a lie, sooner or later you're going to have to tell another lie to cover up that lie, and then another lie to cover up that lie. So, sooner or later you're going to get caught in a lie. Why not just be honest and truthful about it? Don't go into telling lies. You just keep on having to lie and lie and lie, and it'll never work out. Verse 14 says, A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. You know, if you always tell the truth, if you're always speaking good things and and nothing comes bad out of your mouth, then, you know, you're satisfied with that. You feel good about yourself. And... You know, the good deeds that you do for people, um, that'll be returned to you. Verse 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. And there again, he's talking about, you know, a wise man listens where a fool chatters. Uh, listen become wise don't be a fool and and never listen and try to get instruction 16 a fool's wrath is presently known but a prudent man converteth shame he that speaketh truth Showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. What these verses are saying here is if your preacher preaches a message. And that sword pierces you right through the heart. If he hits you, if he's talking right straight to you, um, take it and learn from it and, you know, correct whatever's wrong in your life. Don't turn around and badmouth the preacher um, and... Blame it all on him, cause chances are he don't know what's going on in your life, just like I don't know what's going on in your life or anything else. But if I say something or your preacher says something that steps on your toes, then you know we're not we're not to apologize for it. That's the way God's Word works. That's the way Jesus Christ works. You know, if something's wrong in your life, then step up, correct it, do something about it. (coughs) Excuse me. Verse 19, it says, The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. And that's pretty self-explanatory there. You know, I always tell the truth. Sooner or later, you're going to get caught up in a lie. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. But the counselors of peace is joy. There There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. You know, talking about 
when when the Lord comes and and takes us home or or if we go home before the Lord comes and you're saved, you go to heaven, everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be perfect. But if you're not saved, if you're out there living that wicked life, all you're going to see is trouble. You're going to see wickedness. That's all you have to look forward to. Verse 22, it says, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. One of the characteristics of a child of God should be honesty, truthfulness. Um, we should never be sloths. Slothful, excuse me. Um, because I promise you, you will get found out. Verse 25, it says, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. That's so true. When we see somebody that's heartbroken or feeling down or sad or depressed or whatever, we should give them words of encouragement. Try to lift them up. Try to help them in any way that we can. 26 says, The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces seduces them. You know, the righteous man, he will always try to Help his neighbor, help his fellow man, uh, do good, help in any way he can. But the wicked man, he's always got wicked thoughts. He's just, he's always got wicked things in his heart. He always does bad, um, to his neighbor. That's just no good. Verse 27 says, the slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. And, you know, I hunt myself, and for me to go out and um, shoot a deer and not be willing to take that deer and, and fix it or, you know, clean it, or whatever needs to be done to it, if I just shoot it and let it lay there, then, you know, I don't need to be hunting, I don't need to be doing that, but, you know, I don't do this, take it, and have it cut up, and uh, a lot of times I'll give it away to people that want it or need it, or whatever, but, and I'll eat some. Um, that's the way we should do. Don't be wasteful. Don't be lazy. Verse 28 says, In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Something that's going to happen to each and every one of us if the Lord doesn't return first is death. We're all going to die one day. But what this is saying is if you're a child of God, if you've been saved, if Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, you have an eternal life waiting on you in heaven. Um, What a wonderful thought that is. There's nothing... To look forward to uh, death, if, if you're not saved, death is a deep, dark, scary place to 
to the even think of. You have nothing but hell to look forward to. But if you're a child of God, then thank the Lord you have everything perfect. You have that life eternal to look forward to. I thank God so much. I thank the Lord for saving my soul. Well, that's all I have this morning. I hope uh, at least someone got a blessing out of this. Uh, I enjoyed it. And if we keep going through the coronavirus stay-at-home order and social distancing and all they've got going in place right now, um, we will hopefully be here again next week so study chapter 13 of the book of proverbs i promise you you'll get a blessing out of god's word every time you study it and read it um if you study it and read it for the right reasons you will get a blessing But thanks everyone for listening, and I hope everyone has a wonderful week. And as always, if anyone needs anything, just contact me. Be glad to help in any way I can. I love each and every one. God bless.